Navigation in the north uh, latitudes is difficult mainly because of the alignment. And the reason for that is that the physical effect that is measured for the alignment is the uh, projection of the Earth's rotation rate on the horizontal plan. This is why it's more difficult to get aligned in north uh, latitudes. We are here in Farbach, in the north of Norway, because the Norwegian Polar Institute are conducting some tests and they offer us the possibility to test our products in, uh, at very high latitude. Uh, due to the nature of how gyro compasses calculate north, the further, uh, the further as you go to higher latitudes, it gets much more difficult to actually accurately project where north is using the techniques we use. Mm, that we need to have uh, correct uh, courses. Uh, when we plan uh, a sailing route, especially when we are close to land, uh, it's very important for us to know the exact heading so we can plan where we should steer and then when we are on the place and in, in a chart we can and the area we we have to adjust it so it's also fit uh, with what's happening. Uh, we have to take care of the current and uh, at those latitude more than the stability the problem is to determine the heading with, uh, without bias. Uh, the stability of the gyroscopes is a little bit complicated. It's not a straightforward one-off number. Uh, the, all gyroscopes are generally listed as in this case, octans is 0.1 degrees second latitude, which means they will be accurate of 0.1 degrees at the equator. As you go further north, this, the, the second latitude component gets larger and larger. Up here, uh, we're expecting uh, about plus or minus half a degree, very roughly, depending how far north we eventually get. Uh, so we should be within the uh, tolerance of plus or minus half a degree for the octans. For the fins, it's 0.05 degrees. Uh, and for the quadrants it's about plus or minus one degree roughly. So it will vary according to the latitude. So we're up here, uh, we're very kindly being allowed to come along with the Norwegian Polar Institute who use some of our equipment already, they use uh, some of our acoustic releases uh, and they're on a routine mission to recover scientific instruments that they've already deployed. Uh, they're, deplo they're recovering four and deploying five I believe is the, the, the plan. Uh, so they use our equipment, so they're, they're familiar with the company. Uh, so we're going to go along, we've been given the opportunity to go along with them on uh, this trip, install our equipment on their vessel and gather the data and perform a couple of tests while trying not to interfere with their important scientific research that they've, uh, they're up here to do. I think it, we use this information to see what, uh, how much large branch of the Gulf Stream that uh, passes through this area, because we haven't done that before. The gyros who exists that we use this far north at the moment is uh, that we always will have a kind of error uh, on the on the gyro because the latitude adjustments uh, on them uh, do not cover uh, this far north. The error on the heading measurement is proportional to the inverse of the cosine of latitude that we call in our jargon the second of latitude. And so this factor grows extremely fast when you are very close to the, to the pole. The, the results of the test will be analyzed in various ways because we can analyze the results in real time to know how they behave in real time and to be able to test many conditions, many alignment times and uh, many alignment movements, we can recompute the same uh, data in post-processing. So the navigation performance uh, in the specification is not changing with respect to l north latitude. And obviously it was one of the goal of this uh, mission to check that this was true. The fins uh, that we have tested during uh, this expedition uh, showed that the performance of heading were extremely uh, close to the performance. We have a much lower latitude like we have in France or we could have even in, uh, at the equator. 
And so it showed that the alignment procedures that we have uh, described are uh, very efficient. Our gyros uh, are uh, compensated for uh, thermal behavior. So we have, in, during manufacturing, a procedure for calibration of the parameters of the thermal model. So all our gyros are individually uh, calibrated with respect to temperature. So, which means that the remaining sensitivity to uh, temperature is very small and we do not expect that the performances would be different with different temperatures even if they were mounted outside of the vessel. They are so good that you can go very close to the North Pole without ever noticing there could be a problem. The, the fiber optic gyro technology, actually it's quite unique. For any gyroscope technology, when you reach a certain level, you have a limit in performance. And for the fiber optic gyro, you never reach the limit. You have always the potential for better performance. So if you want to use it uh, for a critical mission, you really need to have something uh, to complete it. And actually, it's an inertial navigation system. And uh, that's why now we are using this technology, for instance, for um, very high performance uh, space application for Earth observation and also for uh, nuclear submarine, for instance. But then this performance, you can use it in other fields. So it's really something, uh, I think, which will bring a lot of uh, advantage to the customer and I hope a lot of success to it to also. XBlue is a high technology company uh, working especially in the field of navigation, acoustic, and uh, a lot in the marine environment.